After two and a half years, the murder trial of Casey Anthony is finally going to begin. Nine one one, what's your emergency? I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. I miss that child so much. Casey would not hurt Kaylee. She wouldn't do that. I think it's almost like a hangman's type mentality for some of these people. You have a young mother charged with murdering her child. And by all accounts, didn't even seem to care or tell anyone that her child was even missing. We're going to see her little face again. I pray to God every day that we do. The breaking developments today, human remains found within walking distance of the Anthony family home. We have the best in the business reviewing this evidence. There is no evidence of a homicide here. The evidence is circumstantial. There's no smoking gun here. They simply have no physical evidence, and they looked for physical evidence. When Kaylee's remains were found, duct tape was found on her skull. So Casey Anthony's DNA was not found on that duct tape. Correct. What about Kaylee's? Hers is not found on that duct tape either. Sheriff's deputies say a cadaver-trained German shepherd noted a smell of human remains in the trunk of Casey's white Pontiac. When I look at the evidence, there's nothing there that says there was a dead body. There's lots of evidence that says that there was a bag of garbage. The significance of the evidence is in the hands of the jury. In all my years as a jury consultant, I'm going to say two words to you, Casey Anthony. This is the toughest uphill climb. Does this shed doubt for you on Casey's culpability of any criminal case I've been involved in? On first degree murder, who would acquit Casey Anthony? It's been two and a half years since Casey Anthony was first arrested and charged with murdering her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee, in a criminal case that has become a public obsession. Here comes Casey Anthony, handcuffed behind her back. The evidence is overwhelming. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. No one else in the world could have done this except Casey Anthony. People hate her. She's been portrayed as an evil person. <laughs> Casey was a 22-year-old single mother. She and her daughter lived with Casey's parents, George and Cindy, in their Orlando home. <laughs> Casey was a good mom. Casey put her daughter first. She put her first. She did. Put it in your basket. Put the egg in your basket. The little girl was described by most everyone around her as incredibly cute, happy, and outgoing. She's just a beautiful child. <laughs> but Kaylee disappeared that summer after Casey took her daughter and left her parents' home. Even more startling is that Casey waited an entire month before revealing to her family and authorities that her child was missing. My daughter's been missing for the last 31 days. A fact that sent the local media into overdrive. You know, I think it's very unfair of the media to go and harass people, and that's what exactly what the media has done. You can see the satellite trucks, the media trucks, the live trucks. Well, what about the odor that you said you smelled? To hey, the Cindy, I just had one quick question for you. Confronted by a constant barrage of reporters' questions outside her home. I'm telling you right now, I'm done. Cindy finally lashed out. I've asked you guys to respect my privacy. All of you leeches, all of you parasites, all of you maggots out here, okay? That's true because that's exactly what you guys are. All of you guys. Fueling the flames, Casey claimed her nanny, 
a woman no one could find, much less even prove existed, had kidnapped the child. Meanwhile, thousands of volunteers helped in a massive search for Kaylee, but were hampered by flooding caused by bad weather. I pray every night that when I wake up the next morning that it would be just a nightmare. And Kaylee would come in the morning and wake me up. But, um, you know, that prayer can't be answered. That's because six months after Kaylee disappeared in December of 2008, and this will remain a crime scene out here at least through the night, possibly... Her skeletal remains were discovered in a wooded area not far from her grandparents' home. Authorities say duct tape had been wrapped around her skull and her body had been stuffed into two garbage bags. Her exact cause of death was unknown. Throughout it all, though, Get off my property. her parents have stood by her. You wanted to protect your daughter, didn't you? you oh, what kind of grandmother are you, lady? Even when they became targets of the community themselves for protecting their daughter, who many believe is a killer. Baby killer! They're protecting you brought a here. baby killer. Why are you sitting there protecting her? I'm not sitting People here. shouting obscenities. You out here, bitch! to stand out in front of our front yard and call us names, throw things at us, spit on us. Oh my God. Cindy, 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 what are you gonna f***ing do? No. Oh I think it's almost like a, a, a hangman's type mentality with some of these people. There's no proof that Casey had anything to do with it. Mr. Baez, this would take just 30 seconds. An opinion strongly shared by Casey's two lead defense attorneys. She's not running from this. Jose Baez and Cheney Mason have given 48 hours an inside look at the defense as they prepare for trial. Now just a few weeks away. It's an unprovable case because it's not true. If Casey Anthony is convicted, she could face the death penalty. This is not a death penalty case, in my opinion. And I've been trying murder cases for 40 years. There is no evidence linking her to anything to do with the death of this child, period. Can she get a fair trial? I don't know. Baez's concern is finding jurors who he feels haven't been swayed by the constant reports of seemingly solid evidence against Casey Anthony. Media coverage that has been going nonstop for nearly three years. It's very challenging to find people who can be fair and impartial because of the attention that the case has gotten. So defense attorneys brought in this man, Richard Gabriel, by reputation, one of the best trial consultants in the country, to help them try to pick a favorable jury. This is the most high-profile case in America. I'm Jacqueline Lontini for just joining us. We have been in continuous coverage all day. The media pressure on this has been almost entirely negative, 80 to 90 percent of the public believing that she is guilty already. She's a criminal! She's a criminal! She belongs in jail forever. You know, we have a presumption of innocence in this country. Jose Baez tried to get the trial moved out of Orlando, but the judge refused. Instead, when the trial begins May 9th, the lawyers will all travel to another Florida location, chosen by the court, but as yet undisclosed, to pick the jury there. Then those selected jurors will be brought to Orlando and they will be sequestered in a hotel here. So they'll be isolated for the entire period of the trial. The trial is expected to last at least two months. 48 hours commissioned a focus group in Orlando, 12 adults, the same number as on a jury, to see if people there have already made up their minds about this case. Here is a representative group of what we normally see in an Orlando jury. I'm going to say two words to you, Casey Anthony. We asked the defense consultant, Richard Gabriel, to conduct the focus group. How do you have a trial in this case? You don't. It's already been on trial. She's been on trial? Did the rest of you feel like we have basically had a trial here? Mm -hmm. She's all, basically all, been tried by the media. She's been tried by the media. All we need is to bring 12 people in to give their stamp of approval. Right. Guilty. Yeah. Let's do it. OK. Exactly. Unfortunately, yeah. that's it. Everybody's already formed their opinion, and for the most part, it's guilty. 
It hasn't helped the defense that their client from jail has been openly defiant. I don't care about the media. I don't care about what people have been saying about me. That doesn't matter because I know it's not true and everyone that knows me knows that it isn't true. Do you think it's possible that she'll be able to get a fair trial? No. No, no probably not. Boy, you guys were almost unanimous. <laughs> Clearly, what most people think they know about the Casey Anthony case is probably incorrect. The biggest case with the least evidence that I've seen ever anywhere. what was happening to her as the tape was applied. First one piece, then two, three pieces of duct tape to completely cut off the flow of air through her mouth or her nose. It's clear in this case why the death penalty was uh, reinstituted. For weeks now, lawyers on both sides of the Casey Anthony case have been in court. Got to get the report. That's my objection. If I can finish, please. Battling over just what forensic evidence will be allowed at the upcoming trial. Do you believe the state has a strong case? Uh, I think they have a lot of evidence, but just because there's a lot of evidence doesn't mean the state's got it right. Larry Kobolinski is a forensic expert and part of an entire forensic team that is consulting with Casey's defense. They maintain there's a lot of critical evidence prosecutors don't have, especially for a death penalty case, like any incriminating DNA or fingerprints. And authorities have never been able to determine the cause of Kaylee's death. There are many things that might not show up in bones. Kathy Reichs is a noted forensic anthropologist who also writes crime novels. She is one of the defense experts in the case. I conducted a full skeletal autopsy of Kaylee Anthony's remains and found no evidence of trauma, no evidence that would point to a specific cause or manner of death. Medical examiner decided this was a homicide, not knowing the cause of death. And, and here we're saying it could have been an accident. We don't know, yet we're calling it a homicide. How, how could this be a death penalty case? Well, we have to remember this isn't CSI. Um, this is real life. Prosecutors in the case declined to speak with 48 hours, but Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, a former prosecutor herself, is convinced of the power of the evidence against Casey Anthony. Often, we don't have confessions. Um, often, we don't have DNA. But I think when you add the evidence up, piece by piece, and these are very good prosecutors, they're going to establish a timeline that no one else could have murdered little Kaylee other than her mother. Who was the last person to see her daughter alive? Perhaps the most significant physical evidence in the case is that duct tape that was found with Kaylee's remains. I believe that is some of the most damaging evidence. And I think that's one of the reasons that they are able to seek the death penalty. The prosecution cannot... Prosecutors argue that duct tape is what killed two-year-old Kaylee. In a chilling moment at one hearing... Kaylee was almost three when she was killed. Assistant State Attorney Jeff Ashton detailed how he believes the tape may have been used to suffocate the little girl. As the killer looked into her face, maybe her killer even saw her eyes as the tape was applied so that no breath was possible. But defense attorney Cheney Mason says duct tape did not kill Kaylee Anthony. No evidence of that. No, that's the figment of imagination of an overzealous prosecutor. One key reason the defense contends is that none of Kaylee's DNA from her skin was on the duct tape, despite its adhesive backing. I would assume that if it were on her body and there was soft tissue, uh, that there would be DNA on, on the duct tape. There often isn't DNA found in cases, especially in such a decomposed state. That's going to be a battle of the experts there. <laughs> 
Prosecutors also theorize Casey carried her daughter's body around in her car trunk, possibly for a few days before dumping it in the woods. They cite a strong, terrible odor. Several people, including Casey's own parents, notice coming from the trunk. They also found a hair there similar to these, with what they call banding at the root, which prosecutors say is usually associated with a decomposing body. The state says that we found a hair. Lawyer Linda Kenny Bodden is a former member of Casey Anthony's defense team and a forensic expert herself. But the problem is, is the FBI's done a lot of studies and they find they can get that kind of decomposition if a hair falls out of a live person. This is really not proof that a decomposing body was present in the, in the trunk. And investigators aren't even sure that the hair they found is Kaylee's. After conducting new cutting edge tests, prosecutors say they found high levels of chloroform in the car trunk which may prove there was decomposition there. Quite frankly, if this judge lets this high chloroform in as indicative of body decomposition, this case gets reversed. This is such junk science, it's beyond junk. The defense also points out there was no chloroform found in Kaylee's remains. Pam Bondi says that's not surprising. Chloroform dissipates rather quickly and her body was completely skeletonized. It would have been highly unlikely for them to have found any traces of chloroform in her bones. But since chloroform is also a powerful anesthetic, its presence in the trunk may have additional significance for prosecutors. There may have been enough chloroform in the trunk for them to argue that there were chemicals in the trunk to sedate and kill little Kaylee. As for that terrible odor in the trunk, defense attorney Jose Baez says, it's meaningless. I think the evidence is clear that there was a bag of garbage in the trunk of the car in the summer heat. The car trunk stunk, but there's nothing that is exclusive to a human being that was found in the trunk of that car. A point underscored by another defense witness, entomologist Dr. Tim Huntington, a bug expert, who disagrees with state claims that the trunk contained evidence of insects that feed on decomposing tissue. The flies in the trunk are ridiculously common. When I look at the evidence, there's nothing there insect-wise that says there was a dead body. There's lots of evidence that says that there was a bag of garbage. At Casey's upcoming murder trial, much of the forensic evidence will be picked over in a war of opposing experts. But for prosecutors, the forensics may not be the strongest part of their case. Casey Anthony was not ready to be a mother. It is Casey Anthony's behavior that will take center stage at her trial. And it's what she did in the month after little Kaylee went missing that again is the most compelling evidence of all. The last known video of Kaylee Anthony was taken on June 15, 2008. She had spent the day with her grandmother, Cindy. Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was a great day. The following day, Kaylee left her house with her mother, Casey. George Anthony expected them home that evening. We were walking him out to the car that day and telling him bye-bye, see you later, and blowing kisses to her. And... <sighs> that day, June 16th, marks the beginning of the troubling month-long period that has become the centerpiece of the case against Casey Anthony and the cause of the venom directed at her by the public and local media. The search for Kaylee. It all boils down to her behavior, says Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. She is her own worst enemy. She is her own worst enemy, certainly. We all know when a child goes missing, the first hours are the most critical. She didn't tell anyone her daughter was missing. At first, Casey's parents had no reason to worry. She told them that she and Kaylee were staying with a friend. 
She said she had met up with some friends that she hadn't seen for a while, and so I didn't think much of it. But Casey herself later admitted that Kaylee was gone for the entire month before she reported it. Attorneys Jose Baez and Cheney Mason now face the daunting task of explaining that. The most uh, telling problem that we recognize is the inherent prejudice that has run through this community since July of 2008. Prejudice? Yeah, prejudice against this young girl because she didn't act in a fashion that a lot of people think she should have. How did Casey behave? These photos have become notorious. The photographs, I believe, are what's going to get her. The photographs of her out dancing, partying all night long, that is the most compelling evidence of all. George and Cindy didn't know anything about their daughter's partying. As time passed, her excuses for not coming home kept changing. She was in Jacksonville. She had car problems. I started really pushing to talk to Kaylee. And it seemed like every time that Casey and I were on the phone, she wasn't where she was with Kaylee. While Cindy pined for her grandchild, in reality, her daughter was just 10 miles away. Casey had moved in with a boyfriend. She didn't tell her live-in boyfriend her daughter was missing. She didn't tell any members of her family that her daughter was missing. You know, I would have told every authority figure possible and been banging down doors trying to find her. This man, Jesse Grund, was an ex-fiancé turned friend. He remembers Casey consoling him about his troubles, never indicating she had a problem of her own. When we talked during those 31 days, it was just business as usual. At no time did, hey, I need to tell you something, I, I lost Kaylee, ever come up. According to police reports, a friend who went clubbing with Casey called her a happy person who didn't mention Kaylee or even the fact that she had a child. At no time, says the friend, did Casey give away that something bad was going on in her life. And you know why she was so happy? She was out at bars because she was rid of her child and she could lead a single lifestyle again. And Casey always had an explanation for her daughter's absence. Kaylee was on vacation. Kaylee was visiting other people. Kaylee was at the beach. And then there was the nanny with the improbable name, Zanny. She'd tell me that you know, Kaylee was at the beach with the nanny, or she was somewhere else or being watched by the nanny. Plenty of people heard about Zanny, but the police could not find one person who had actually met her. Casey would later claim that Zanny had kidnapped Kaylee. She frequented the club, she says, because she was conducting her own investigation. She's trying to get someone she to help her. She told us that she was going to places where she thought that she might run into someone that knew. Zanny, or where Zanny might be. So we could find that she could find her. She was conducting her own investigation. Plausible? Comical, um, if it wasn't such a tragic event. In early July 2008, Casey got a tattoo, Bella Vita, it reads, Italian for beautiful life. She planned to get another, but before she could, her seemingly carefree days came to an end. The car she had used was found abandoned, and on July 15th, her parents went to retrieve it. Cindy scolded Casey over the phone. So I said, Case, I said, you're not in Jacksonville. She said she'd call me back. She tracked Casey down and confronted her face to face. I asked her, I said, where's Kaylee? And she said she was at Zanny's house. And I said, well, let's go get her. They drove around until it became clear that Casey was simply not going to take her to see Kaylee. They went home and Cindy called 911. 911, what's your emergency? Cindy reported a possible missing child. We'll have a deputy out to you as soon as one's available, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Only then, with police on the way, did Casey finally admit that Kaylee had been missing for a month. And so what do you mean? She's been taken. Why didn't you tell me? Cindy called 911 again. She was the very first person to mention that awful odor in the trunk. There's something wrong. I found my daughter's car today, and it smells like there's been a dead body in the damn car. I said whatever it would take to get the police there quicker. Can she retract that statement that it smelled like a dead body in that trunk? Well, she can attempt to retract it, but they have the 911 tape. 
and they have that month of Casey's conduct, which her attorneys insist will be explained in court. She waited a month before reporting her daughter missing. And I think there's a very compelling reason for that. And what it is the reason come out. for that? There's a very compelling reason for that, and that will come out at trial. For more than two years, while Casey Anthony has been locked up in jail awaiting trial, she has been vilified. She's been portrayed as guilty. She's been put into that position from day one. But Casey is hardly alone. Her parents, Cindy and George, have been sharply criticized for their behavior, both before and after their granddaughter went missing. Initially, the country believed that the Anthonys were the all-American family, but quickly learned they were anything but. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi, who has followed the case closely from the beginning, says understanding the entire Anthony family may be the key to the whole case. I think it's tragic. I, I think there's a, a family dynamic that's hard for all of us to understand that was going on within the Anthony family. What exactly was going on? Bondi says these jailhouse conversations are telling. Maybe we've all been too domineering. The parents seemed to be very um, deferential to her. Maybe we didn't <sighs> let you be the best Dad, mom. It's, I, I, it's you, nobody's you are a great fault. Mom. It's nobody's fault. But it's all that's going to change. I'm going to listen more. She was running the show, even in jail. We just need all the cooperation we can get, sweetheart. I've given you guys everything that I have and some. Since Casey's arrest, Cindy has desperately tried to help her daughter. During this 2008 jailhouse visit, before Kaylee's body had been found, she pressed Casey for details about the mysterious nanny she called Zanny. Listen, I'm in front of the cameras all the time. What message do you want me to give to Zanny that she needs to return Kaylee? Casey Anthony is a habitual liar. She sent the police looking for a nanny that didn't exist for weeks and weeks and weeks. I can't fathom that this is someone that Casey would all of a sudden, you know, make up. Investigators never found anything to substantiate Casey's claim that Kaylee was abducted by a nanny. But now, nearly three years later, and for the first time, one of Casey Anthony's former defense attorneys, Linda Kenny Bodden, concedes to 48 hours there never was a nanny. So she lied when she, she lied. said that the nanny kidnapped the sure. baby. I think everyone knows that that was a lie. Her actions have been her own worst enemy. What does that say about her state of mind? It says that she's extremely manipulative. So she's just leading police on a wild goose chase the entire time her daughter is missing. According to Bondi, Casey's dishonesty came as no surprise to her family and friends. She was a habitual liar by all her friends' and family's accounts. It's documented that she was taking money from her grandmother that was used to help care for her grandfather. Because of who she is, because of her upbringing, because of how she's been treated, she lies. But being a liar does not make you a murderer. Do you think Casey Anthony was a good mother? Yes, I think Casey Anthony was a very good mother. Linda, you're not telling me that Casey Anthony was mother of the year. I'm not saying that she's mother of the year. I don't think any of us are mother of the year, but I'm saying she's not the demon that people have made her out to be. Still, one of the reasons why Casey faces not only a murder charge, but the death penalty, is what investigators found on the Anthony's family home computer. Incriminating searches she allegedly made months before Kelly went missing, with terms including neck breaking, household weapons, shovel, and how to make chloroform. These were all internet searches done on the computer that Casey Anthony used three months before that little girl went missing. So if that doesn't give you premeditation, I don't know what does. They don't know if Casey was even home, much less on the computer. So these searches are, are insignificant? Absolutely, absolutely. If you can't say who ran the searches, how are the searches significant? 
They could have been done by any family member. Investigators have interviewed many of Casey's friends and family members to understand what was happening inside her home. And one of those witnesses, ex-fiancee Jesse Grun says, he knows exactly what was going on. This is somebody who lived a life of no consequences under that roof. In 2005, Jesse says Casey desperately wanted to leave home because she deeply resented her mother for trying to play mom to Kaylee, then just an infant. We know from all of Casey's friends that they had a very tumultuous relationship. It wasn't Casey's child, it was our child. She belonged to all of us. I don't think that there was ever resentment there. But investigators were told that Cindy actually thought Casey was irresponsible and called her an unfit mother. At one point, sources say, she even threatened to seek custody of her granddaughter. I never said she was an unfit mother. I never said that. She was my best friend. And most critical of all, in June 2008, on the night before Casey left with her daughter for good, Jesse Grun claims he heard that Casey and Cindy had a huge fight. Cindy confronted Casey about Casey stealing money from Cindy's mother, and a shouting match ensued, which then had Cindy wrapping her hands around Casey's neck and choking her. It's not true. Mr. Grun has come up with a lot of statements that are not true. Anyone and everyone was just willing to come out and say whatever, uh, all these bad things about her. Attorney Jose Baez agrees that to understand his client, one must first understand her parents, which is why he has taken a closer look at the family dynamic. I understand that you reportedly spend a couple thousand dollars investigating the Anthonys. We've left no stone unturned. We're investigating this case. And to do that, you have to um, look inside the house. They're in the center of the storm. For everyone to understand Casey, you have to also understand her family. In fact, recent Florida media reports suggest Casey's defense team may be planning to take their investigation one step further by blaming Kaylee's death on her grandfather. There has been speculation on local television that, that you may try to pin this murder case on George Anthony. There's speculation about everything. I will not engage in that. I will lay it all out in the courtroom. That's where this case is going to be tried. Is it possible that George Anthony killed this little girl? Well, I guess we're going to have to wait and see what the evidence shows. In response to those reports, George Anthony released a statement through his attorney denying any involvement in his granddaughter's death. It said George Anthony had nothing to do with the death of Kaylee Marie Anthony. Neither the defense team nor the state of Florida have maintained that he is at fault in any way. Despite the rumors. Next, tornado terror, part of the same system dumping heavy rain on our area. We have team coverage. Oscar winning actor Nicolas Cage and his arrest in the Big Easy. The news is next. Their children. <laughs> and that, that's what you think of when you think of a mother and a beautiful child. <laughs> she did not want this little girl. I think she wanted a life of partying and, and this little girl got in the way of all that. But will signs of a dysfunctional family and a decadent lifestyle really be enough to convict Casey Anthony of murder? So here's the question for all of you. Our focus group will decide for themselves. Who here would vote to acquit Casey Anthony of first degree murder? Please stand up. With Casey Anthony's trial about to begin, her attorney, Cheney Mason, makes a prediction, but not about the outcome. I think it probably will be the most expensive case in the history of Orlando or Orange County. The process of bringing a jury to town, sequestering them for two months or whatever, plus the investigation, the total cost is in the millions. Is that reason enough to pressure both sides into reaching a plea deal? No prosecutor in this country would let budgetary constraints influence the decision 
as to whether to prosecute a murder case. You never know what a jury's going to do. And right now, Casey Anthony has everything to lose because she's facing the death penalty. Casey Anthony has entered a plea of not guilty. We expect the trial to go on May 9th. The plan is for the court and lawyers to travel to an as yet undisclosed location in the state to pick jurors who everyone is hoping know far less about the case than the people of Orlando, where Casey and her parents live and where Kaylee's remains were found. The judge has to find people who have the ability to basically erase from their minds everything they've heard and seen about this case and discussed. The defense's trial consultant, Richard Gabriel, says that's not going to be easy. He has to find out about all the people's feelings about the death penalty and whether they're able to sit on a case like this and be put in a very intense pressure cooker for a two-month period of time. Eric, would you read it into the records? The judge, as of now, is giving us five days. And that's not enough time. May the attorneys approach the bench? For both sides, the stakes couldn't be any higher. Probably the, the worst thing that an attorney has to deal with in any high-profile case is jury selection. You actually win or lose your case in jury selection, depending on whether you can pick a jury that will listen to you. This court will be in recess to 9 8. It's going to be very difficult for her to come out of this case with anything but a guilty verdict on something. Our focus group received a limited presentation of evidence likely to be argued by both sides of the case, including some of the forensic evidence and physical evidence like that duct tape. They listened to Cindy's 911 calls and heard about Casey's reported behavior. And after roughly four and a half hours, the participants came to a shocking conclusion. If the only charge okay, was first-degree murder, who here, based on everything you've heard today, plus whatever else you know about this case, would vote to acquit Casey Anthony of first-degree murder? Please stand up. <laughs> Unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. With reluctance, I understand. Okay, great. With yeah. reluctance because while participants opposed convicting Casey Anthony of first-degree murder, they were also signaling an equally strong reluctance to let her walk free. What do you think happened here? I think it was accidental. I think it was, an I think accidental. It was accidental. Accidental how, though? Maybe what, she what fell, happened? Yeah. or, you know, with the little girl's dead, and she's trying to cover it up. Maybe she was afraid that she would be accused of child abuse. I don't think she intended to kill her. She obviously has yeah. mental issues. She has lied. She deserves to be punished. Be Another sure. critically important question. Did they feel Casey Anthony is still criminally responsible for her daughter's death? And if so, would they be willing to convict her of a lesser charge? Please stand. How many of you would vote to convict on an involuntary manslaughter charge? Nearly all of you. Nine of the 12 participants. Okay. Thank you very much. Voted to convict her. That makes me hopeful that maybe the people of Orlando are not being led around as much as I thought by the local news media. That's also the fondest hope of Cindy and George Anthony, while still mourning the loss of their granddaughter Kaylee. I'll release the balloons up to our loved ones. Happy birthday, Kaylee Marie. We love you guys. They must face the difficult reality that they may lose their daughter Casey as well. I have faith, I have a lot of faith that Casey will be home with us soon.